Christmas Women World Leaders. What a fun night as we kick off this Christmas season and we celebrate our book launch, Courageous Steps of Faith. I do want to say congratulations to each of the authors who are listening. I, I know that you ladies have poured your hearts into this book, that writing your story and submitting to God's call to get your story published takes courage. It can be intimidating to open your life for others to see the peaks and valleys of what you've experienced. But that's what Christian sisterhood is all about. And being real with each other is part of our mission here at Women World Leaders. It's why this book was written. So many times we go through heartache, pain, trials, and even times of doubt in our lives. And we feel like we have to walk through it alone. These stories, we pray, will reassure you that you are not alone. In this Christmas season, I wanna reflect with you on a woman whose story is not in this book, but is in the Bible. Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was called to walk courageously. I want us to take some time tonight to focus on Mary, to imagine ourselves in her situation. What would I do? Would I have the strength to walk courageously as she did? As we examine her strength, I am going to allow some of the authors to share pieces of their stories because the fact of the matter is we are not so different from Mary. We are each called to walk courageously through this life that God has crafted specifically for us. God knew what lay ahead of you before the, uh, before the day you were born. And he positioned you with specific gifts and people around you and the Holy Spirit himself to guide you and strengthen you. Nothing surprises God. With him, all things are possible. So imagine Mary, a young Jewish girl, being raised in a society ruled by Herod the Great. Herod presented himself as a protector of Judaism. He encouraged the development of the synagogue communities, and he rebuilt the temple in Jerusalem, making it even more amazing than it was in the days of Solomon. And yet Herod was an evil man, a cruel tyrant who had no qualms about killing those who came against him, including two of his own sons, I'm sorry, two of his own wives, three of his sons, and his mother-in-law. Mary, who came from a long line of God-fearing ancestors, must have understood that all was not right with the world. Perhaps she sensed that God wanted her to make a difference. The Bible doesn't tell us that, but I don't think it's a leap to think that God was preparing her in her spirit for the life that he was calling her to. I believe that Mary walked courageously through her life before we even see her story birthed in the pages of the Bible. And I believe that God prepares us for what he calls us to. I wanna introduce you to Natalie Malusi, one of our authors who was struck by unrest happening around her and knew that God wanted her to be part of the solution. Hi, my name is Natalie, and I am a contributing author to Courageous Steps of Faith. I'm going to share a one minute synopsis of my chapter. Have you ever seen fire erupting all around you and known that God was calling you to grab a bucket and put it out? That's how I felt when my children's babysitter committed suicide. The death of this precious 17-year-old girl, whom my family and community love, sent our world into flames. Psalm 34:18 says in the message, if your heart is broken, you will find God right there. If you've been kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. In the coming years, my community lost several more teenagers in a stream of suicides. 
Through it all, I felt a deep desire to help our broken community through this time of great pain, grief, and hopelessness. The way that God filled that desire took courage, but still leaves me breathless today. God connected me, little me, with the powerful pillars of faith, including one's name who you may know, Nick Vujicic. Nick Vujicic was born without arms and legs. He's an international speaker, author, and evangelist who spreads the gospel message. He also speaks to youth on bullying, suicide, and never giving up. I'm excited for you to read my story of courage, which is really God's story of strength and empowerment. You see, in the midst of unthinkable tragedy in this world, God gave me the opportunity to work with him, to be his hands and feet, to comfort, sustain, and bless others who are going through so much, and prayerfully to help keep tragedy from happening to someone else. God has a mission for you too, and I hope that by reading my story, this will spark the courage in you to step into the fire, to step into faith, and do what God has called you to do. Together and by the grace of God alone, we can make a difference in this world. God bless you. Natalie saw the fire around her, and she knew that God gave her a mission to make a difference in this world, and she answered the call. I love that she says that her story is a story of God's strength and empowerment. I believe Mary, the mother of Jesus, <laughs> would have felt the same. Imagine the young Mary about to be wed when the angel appeared to her and asked her to do the impossible, to do certainly more than she ever thought she could. She was told, that she had found favor with God and that she was to give birth to a baby boy who would be called the son of the most high, who would be given the throne of David, who would reign forever and whose kingdom would never end. Mary simply asked, how? The angel replied that the child, the son of God would be given to her by the Holy Spirit and assured her that nothing is impossible with God. Mary's courageous answer, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. None of us are being asked to be the mother of Jesus. That job is taken, but we are sometimes asked to do things that seem impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Take a listen to two of our authors who had to rely on God for the courage to do what he called them to do. Hi, I'm Jenny Sorello. And I'm Marsha Ball. And we are the co-founders and directors of an international ministry called Curious Global Education. We're honored to be a part of Courageous Steps of Faith and to be able to share our stories personally, but also share a little bit about um, the story of Curious. Yeah, and you know, we, at Karis, we've talked about courage for many, many years now. We even have a curriculum called It Takes Courage. So courage is important to us. And, and this book has um, stories in it from women all over the world, different elements of courage. Some of the courage of a calling, others are courage to forgive, courage to move forward and seize all that God wants for us because of things that have happened to us or things we've done. Um, for us, it's been more motivated in terms of a life purpose. Um, but this whole concept of courage um, has been a thread throughout our entire ministry. In fact, in our chapter, we talk a little bit about our backgrounds. Like for me personally, I share about um, my father who was an evangelist and sitting under a tent and how many people walked through that line and were healed and how one night my life was changed. I can read more about that, or about Mother Teresa and working with her home for dying children, um, or about our travels in 50 nations, or our orphan care center, where we have been able to pour into lives in Soshengudi, South Africa, and we talk about sort of the hardships of that, of being able to have precious orphans in our care, but also how God shows up in incredible ways. 
Moms, I think you're going to be excited to see how um, in my life something that happened to me at five years old um, made a huge difference and my family heritage and how that built into me um, a belief in a big God. And you know, this whole concept of courage for us wasn't that we, we needed courage to trust there's a big God. We grew up in families that demonstrated that. We saw that. What we needed to do was to have the courage to believe that we, as individuals, could do the things that God said we could do and how he prepared us to do those things. The courage to believe and to step out and let God backfill and keep nudging us forward to be able to partner with him in ministry. We look forward to seeing you hopefully soon and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You. Buy the book. Yes, go out and get Buy it. Buy the couch. You'll put up your feet. Have a <laughs> cup of coffee and be blessed. Take care. What a gift Jenny and Marcia are to this ministry and, and indeed to this world. Praise God that they trusted that God was big enough that nothing is impossible with him. And praise God that Mary said yes to being the mother of Jesus. But what we have to remember is that while saying the initial yes took courage, Mary had to be courageous every day for the years that followed. Remember the ruler, Herod? He was ready to kill anyone who would threaten his reign. And when, a, when word reached him that a Jewish king was born, he was determined that the baby should not live. Matthew records for us that an angel appeared to Joseph and told him to take Jesus and Mary and flee to Egypt. So they left in the dark of night, obediently and courageously moving to a foreign country. Sometimes God tells us to go, to leave behind all that we know. Our author Addie was also called to pack up and go, in her case to leave a relationship that God had not ordained and was destructive to her very being. But God was with her and he continues to go before her until this very day. Relationships are a part of life and relationships with godly friends are a gift from God. Sometimes we have to make choices to turn towards godly influences and turn away from those relationships that will harm us. That is the basis for my story in Courageous Steps of Faith. God called me to turn away from a toxic relationship and he gave me the power and strength to load up my car and go and start a new life. Proverbs 23, 7 says, So a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your will is the seat of your soul. Whatever governs your will is your master. If your appetite, selfishness, and personal agenda governs your will, God is not your master. The will has to be submitted to Christ on a daily basis. You must find out his will and crucify yours. This is a lesson I had to learn the hard way. You can read about the ups and downs I had to go through in my chapter. And my prayer is that through my words and my story, you will gain the strength and courage to know that God will uphold you too in the difficult decisions that he is calling you to make in your life. As you read, I will walk you through five steps of a courageous faith following the will of God in your life. I'm not saying these steps are easy, but I do know that God is calling you to a deeper walk with him. My name is Adriana Richardson. Welcome to Courageous Step of Faith. Like Addie said, your will must be submitted to God on a daily basis. God will uphold you. Not to tell the end of Adiana's story, but I do want to make sure you know how to find her in Courageous Steps of Faith. She just introduced herself as Adiana Richardson, but in the book, she's listed as Adiana Pierre. <laughs> Ever since she wrote her story, God has faithfully blessed Addie. And we want to say congratulations, Addie, to you and your husband on your recent wedding. We wish you the best of God's blessings in the years to come. Anyone who is a mom 
knows that there are hidden trials in the years, hidden years in, in motherhood. Those times when you wonder if anyone sees or cares about the work you are pouring in day after day. And I'm certain that Mary was no different. She knew what she knew about her son, Jesus, and yet she worked in the shadows day after day. I'm sure sometimes she was tired, sometimes frustrated, sometimes fulfilled and overjoyed. I'm sure she went to God in prayer. Can you imagine the responsibility of raising the son of God? Each walk of motherhood looks a little differently, a little different because each woman has her own calling and each child has his or her own calling. Each situation is unique. And the only way we can walk courageously is by calling out to God and allowing him to guide us and to fill us with his strength to do what he has called us to do. I want to introduce to you Diane, whose walk of motherhood looks a little bit different than others. Diane has had to trust God that his way is the best way and that he indeed works all things together for the good of those who love him. Hi, my name is Diane Shoveldayoff and I'm one of the authors in Courageous Steps of Faith. And I am so honored to be a part of this book. You see, every woman has to find the place that God has for her. Your place is unique to you and very different from mine and probably even different from what you expected and especially what the world expected. The roles we fill will determine the responsibilities we have, which will dictate where we spend a majority of our time. We may be daughters, sisters, wives, moms, grandmothers, business women, ministry leaders. We could be all of these things at one time, but one thing is for certain, we have all got a limited amount of time. So how are we gonna spend that time and our days? My story in Courageous Steps of Faith, I share as a wife, a mom, and a businesswoman, but most importantly, as a child of God. Filling those roles that he has called me to while listening to his voice and trying to balance my days can be very challenging. As I listened and prioritized to not leave behind the most important part of me, but also not to leave behind the most important God-given responsibilities. See, my story began as a businesswoman. Met the man of my dream, who was soon in ministry. We got married, we had kids, and I stepped into the role of financial provider. This seemed very right as a wife, but as a mom, I questioned what that meant. I had to go to God many times. And the God story that is woven throughout my story is pretty amazing. I'm so excited for you to read it in its entirety. Obviously my story is not your story, but my prayer is that in reading my story, you will feel empowered by the Holy Spirit to follow your story that he has just for you. God bless you in your journey. As Diane said, our prayer is indeed that in reading these stories, you will feel empowered by the Holy Spirit to follow your story that he has just for you. I can imagine Mary's excitement as Jesus stepped into ministry, and yet she saw people coming against him, her baby boy and her God. She must have needed so much courage from the Holy Spirit as she watched her son persecuted, beaten, and put to death. How she must have mourned and cried out to God as she cradled his lifeless body, not understanding, but still trusting, still choosing courageous faith. Sometimes we do everything right, but it seems our world falls down around us. Sometimes we are called to walk through a storm. I myself have been walking through a storm. <laughs> and recently one of my amazingly supportive friends said, you are a strong woman of God. 
my honest thought was, no, I'm not strong. I'm just stuck in this storm where I've been placed. And yet I am strong because I am clinging to God. Our faith is a shield, but it can only shield us if we hold tight to it. Mary had to hold tight to her faith, even as she held the lifeless body of her son. One of our authors, Carrie Denton, shares her story of walking through a storm in her chapter. Hi there, I'm Carrie Denton. I'm a contributing author in Courageous Steps of Faith. I'm so excited to be a part of this group and this story and this God anointed project. You know, life can and will throw us some unexpected curveballs in life. And as Christians, we get to react to that in faith. We get to walk in faith and trust God's provision in all things. You know, I had quite the curveball thrown at me um, a few years ago when my husband was diagnosed with stage four colorectal cancer just a few days before his 35th birthday. You know that feeling where the air feels like it's been sucked out of you when you get something said to you like that? I'm sure you do. We've all been there with something. You know, I found myself turning to Google, trying to learn all I could about cancer and what was colorectal cancer and what made it stage four. You know, I was allowing that information to guide my feelings and emotions and reactions rather than leaning into the Holy Spirit. In my situation, I, I actually had met this nurse who spoke the truth of God into my life. In the midst of the depths of my despair, she said some amazing things that really changed us forever. I'm so excited for you to read my story in Courageous Steps of Faith so that I can pass on to you the truth that upheld me in some of my darkest days. To remind you that God is bigger than any curveball that might be thrown at you. You know, I don't know what you're going through or how you're handling it, but I do know that God always works things out in his own time and in his glory. You know, I can't wait for you to read our book so that you can see how God worked in my life and my husband's life and actually all many lives around us during that time. And not to tell you how a story ends, but I will tell you this. Not only is God bigger than any curveball that can be thrown at you, but God is also bigger than cancer. I'm so excited to share our story with you. Thank you so much. God always works things out in his own time for his own glory. That's the theme of Christmas. Mary walked her life with courage and God's glory prevailed. Jesus walked his life with courage. He walked all the way to his death on the cross through it all, trusting that God had a plan. And that's the theme of our book, Courageous Steps of Faith. God walked with each author through her challenges, her persecution, her trials, her joys, and through it all, he had a plan. Our God will never let us down. We wrote this book for you knowing that by sharing our stories, you would be encouraged to walk in faith because with God, all things are possible. You know, I always try to leave you with an action and the obvious action this month is to buy the book <laughs> and then ask God where he wants you to walk courageous, courageously. But I also wanna leave you with one more tool. One of our prayer leaders made this advent calendar with ideas that how we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. And it's beautiful and I had her modify it. So it starts tomorrow and goes through Christmas and Diana is gonna post it in the comments now so you can download it. We would love you to download it and then to go into the world being the hands and feet of Jesus this Christmas. I'm gonna throw it back to Kimberly, but allow me to say Merry Christmas and God's blessings to you on the new year that is soon to be upon us. Thanks for listening to this introduction to Courageous Steps of Faith, written by the Women of Women World Leaders. We invite you to visit our website at womenworldleaders.com to purchase the book or to connect with us. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders. 
All content is copyrighted by Women World Leaders and cannot be used without express written consent.